1947, the Cold War had just started and the United States President was Harry S. Truman. 1947 was also the year that Jackie Robinson became the first African American allowed to play Major League Baseball, ending segregation in the sport. This event helped to set a change in the culture of America. Also happening in 1947, was another big event that's often forgotten. In 1947, Mendez versus Westminster challenged school segregation and the decision in the case overturned a law that said segregation was okay. To begin this story, let me provide a little background. In the late 1920s, anti-Mexican sentiment grew as the Great Depression began. As the stock market crashed and unemployment grew, Anglo-Americans accused Mexicans and other foreigners of taking their jobs. Mexican-Americans were discouraged and in many cases not allowed from accepting any assistance. As fears about jobs and the economy spread, the United States government removed up to 2 million people of Mexican descent from the country, up to 60% of whom were American citizens. The impact on Spanish-speaking communities was devastating. Some light-skinned Mexican-Americans attempted to pass themselves off as Spanish. In other words, being from Spain and not Mexican. They did this in an attempt to stay in the country and avoid being deported. People with disabilities and illnesses were removed from hospitals and dropped at the border. These deportations were referred to as repatriations. However, the Mexican Americans being removed were not leaving voluntarily. When deportations finally slowed down in the late 1930s, up to 2 million Mexican Americans had been repatriated. This is only an estimate because the exact number is nearly impossible to quantify. About one third of the Los Angeles Mexican population was forced to leave the country, as well as a third of the Texas Mexican population. Although both the state of California and the city of Los Angeles later apologized for repatriation, the effect on the Mexican American community was devastating in many ways. Another event that is not often discussed is school segregation in the Latino community. Unlike the South, which had laws keeping African American children from white schools, segregation was not in the laws of the Southwestern United States. Nevertheless, Latino people were excluded from restaurants, movie theaters, and schools. Latino students were expected to attend separate Mexican schools throughout the Southwest beginning in the 1870s. At first, the schools were set up to serve children of Spanish-speaking laborers at rural ranches. Soon, they spread to cities as well. So back to 1947, it was at this time that Gonzalo and Felicitas Mendez sent their children, Gonzalo, Geronimo, and Silvia, with their aunt to get enrolled in school. When enrolling in the Westminster School District, the Mendez children were told that they were not allowed to attend the school of their choice because of their skin color. This was so, even though the aunt's children were allowed to go to the school, they were allowed because they had lighter skin. After this incident, Gonzalo and Felicitas were upset, as expected, and with no way to reach compromise, they were forced to fight. Most families at this point would not be able to fight further, but not the Mendez family. The Mendez family were well-off farmers that could afford to have a legal battle, and they were ready for a fight. After a long legal battle, Westminster tried to appease the Mendez family by only allowing their children to go to whatever school they wanted, but not other Latino children. Realizing this, the Mendez family went on with the lawsuit and helped four other families, the Estrada, Guzman, Palomino, and Ramirez families. In the end, the families won. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit held that segregation of Mexican and Mexican-American students by forcing them to go to Mexican schools was unconstitutional. This landmark decision set the groundwork for Brown v. Board of Education, seven years later, which legally ended school segregation across the entire United States. Sylvia Mendez, 
One of the Mendez children involved in this case has kept fighting to ensure that all children have access to a quality education. She has made sure that people do not forget this story. She has joined the fight against de facto segregation, which is still around today. This elementary school in Los Angeles is 95% Latino. This is one of the many in the Los Angeles area. For example, there is Rowan Avenue Elementary in East LA that is 100% Latino. There is also Belvedere Elementary, which is also in East LA, where 99% of the students are Latino. These demographics are very similar to the Mexican schools that were around in 1947. As you can see, there's still work to be done. As mentioned earlier, Sylvia Mendez is making sure that her family's fight is not forgotten. This high school in Boyle Heights, California is named after her parents, Gonzalo and Felicitas Mendez. This school in Santa Ana, California also bears their name. There are others across the country as well. For her work, Sylvia won a Presidential Medal of Freedom that was presented to her by President Barack Obama. For Sylvia Mendez, a lifelong quest for equality began when she was just eight years old. Outraged that their daughter had to attend a segregated school, Sylvia's parents linked arms with other Latino families to fight injustice in a California federal court, a case that would pave the way for Brown versus Board of Education. Sylvia Mendez. But sadly, this story is still not put in textbooks or taught to students and is relatively unknown to most young adults. Although the court decided that Mexican-American children were allowed to go to the schools of their choice, many still face prejudice. And I'll never forget the first day I walked into that school, and this little boy comes up to me and he says, you're a Mexican. What are you Mexicans doing here? Don't you know that Mexicans don't belong in the school? You're not supposed to be in the school. When that boy said to that to me, I felt this pain in my heart like somebody had stabbed me. I felt so, so hurt, so humiliated that I started crying. I started crying and I go home and I tell my mother, Mother, I don't want to be in that school. They don't want us there. They don't want Mexicans there. And my mother said to me, Sylvia, weren't you aware of what we were fighting for all this time? You were there in court every day. Don't you know exactly what we wanted for you? We wanted for you to know that you are just as equal as that boy. That's what we were fighting for you, to, for you not to feel humiliated, for you not to feel inferior, because under God, you're just as good as he is. Sylvia and her family are examples of people that break barriers by breaking the segregation barrier that barred Latino children for better schools. With courage to fight for what they believe in and the will to help others, her family and the others involved in Mendez vs. Westminster are an important part of the American story.